It's time for another episode of Cheap versus Expensive. This time, we are comparing an Epiphone with a very expensive Gibson. How much better is this? How much worse is that? Stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Turn on notifications, like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for custom swag or check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. Or get Cooper this guitar because he needs one uh, like yeah. this. Uh, this is a Gibson Custom Shop Murphy Lab 1958 Les Paul reissue. I know, it's a long name, but it means a lot. And that... Is not this. Yeah, this is an Epiphone. <laughs> That's the whole name right there. This is an Epiphone 1959 Les Paul. Uh, not in the name, but developed and released in tandem with the Gibson Custom Shop, apparently. This is Dark Cherry Burst. That's pretty light. Yeah, well, it's a light dark cherry. It's a light dark cherry. Uh, but yes, it's maraschino. Um, this is the Epiphone... I guess you could say top of the line Les Paul. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, in, in terms of like a, a traditional style, this is branded as 1959, so it's going for that kind of vibe. That's a 1958. This is a 58, um, and it's a very, very cool 58. We'll kind of talk about some of the differences on here. I mean, clearly you can see them, especially if you look up here. Um, but let's talk about the, what, Epiphone's been doing with the Gibson Custom Shop, and this is kind of along the lines of the inspired by uh, Gibson stuff. Yeah. Which, by the way, little little side note, if you're ever selling one of these secondhand and you try to sell it on eBay and you say it's an inspired by, they'll say, no, 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 you can't say that because you can't compare one brand to another. And you're like, no, it's in the name. And they're like, we don't care because we are brainless. But... Um, so it is inspired by, but in this case, it's a collaboration with the custom shop. And the idea behind these is, is actually a pretty cool one. It's to do a very vintage spec guitar with uh, nice pickups um, and to do it at a good value. So these go for just a little bit over a thousand bucks or about $1,200. And they come with a hard shell case, which is really nice. Um, this and, one's currently on their website for $9.99. Now, I don't know if that's a temporary price drop okay. or not. Because I think it is. They might be doing a special on it right now. Because they're they were twelve ninety nine. Call us and it's nine ninety nine. Uh, <laughs> so it's whatever you want. It's whatever you want it to be. Um, but it, you know, it's got nice hardware. It's got you know the pickups are I think really a big part of it. And then of course the look with the you know the flame top and the the finish that they do on these is really yeah. like this knocked down kind of satin finish nice versus satin. a typical gloss. You've got the. Um, a very similar looking cover on the back, you know, very yeah. nice. You got the vintage tuners. It's it's a vintage spec guitar. Um, and again, I think the fact that it's got these upgrades and it comes with a hard shell case is, is pretty compelling. Yeah, it's nice. These are Burst Bucker 2 and 3, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, Gibson, mainly USA pickups. Yep. So it's kind of like... Epiphone did what a lot of people talk about doing, which is I'm going to buy a less expensive guitar and upgrade the hardware, upgrade the pickups. Right. So it is a nice, made by Epiphone, comes from the factory like this, in a hard showcase, no modifications needed, kicked up Epiphone Les Paul. And it sounds good. It sounds it's good. got nice pickups in it. And that's all that matters. Yeah. Um, according to the internet. So this, on the other hand, uh, needs no introduction, but we'll introduce it anyway. It is a Custom Shop Murphy Lab 58 Les Paul reissue. And it's beautiful, and it's got Murphy Lab checking. This is a light aged? Light aged. Light aged, which means um, the finish is checked and some of the hardware is patinaed. It's a lot like my 59 VOS, but my VOS doesn't have checking. That's about the only difference, but it's, it's not sticky like a lot of brand new nitro finished guitars typically would be. Yeah. Um, and being a 58, it's got some things that are a little bit different than a 59. The biggest telltale sign is the top. No flameage. No flameage. You know, the 58s were the first year of the burst, but typically they didn't have a lot of flame on the top, except maybe toward the end of the year. There's a bit of crossover from 58 to 59, and then from 59 to 60 and so forth. Yeah. The other telltale sign, once you pick one up, is the necks tend to be 
a bit clubbier, a bit yeah. thicker, um, which I like. Um, and in true truth, most of the 59s varied um, when they were produced. I like on mine. It tends to be kind of thick. Not quite this chunky, but I'd, I'd be down for it. Um, those are typically the biggest differences. Um, and then, of course, it's got these custom buckers that are in there. Custom buckers, best pickups that Gibson makes, Agreed. in my opinion, yep. in our opinion. Um, it's the right opinion. So I want to... A couple things. You might be asking why 58 versus 59. Well, we have shown quite a lot of 59 stuff recently. We got this guitar in the, the R8. Um, I think it's worthwhile because everybody always goes for 59. Mm -hmm. 58 and 60 sometimes get a little less attention. Mm -hmm. But regardless, the things that are going to separate this one from that one or a 59 or a 60, they kind of carry over in terms of where it's made. This is made in China. This is made, I think, in the United States. I'm pretty sure. Uh, it was made by Tom Murphy in a cave with a box of with scraps. With a box of scraps. Um, yeah, but when it comes to construction, the feel, the big deal for us always is going to be the neck yep. profile on an Epiphone versus a Gibson. Um, but pickups, while these are nice Gibson pickups, which kind of makes this an interesting comparison, that's, like I said, the one thing everybody says, well, you can buy a... a Epiphone Les Paul and put Gibson pickups in it. They did. I would still say burst buckers are not as much to my liking as custom buckers. It's all tiered. There's always levels right. of everything. Um, but the cool thing about both of these, it's not like we're comparing one with a bunch of switching options to one that's real old school. Yeah. This is just as classic as you can get from Epiphone versus really as classic as you can get from Gibson in the custom shop. And kind of in both brands, the top of the line, you know. Um, they both sound good, they both play very good, and they both uh, sound different <laughs> from each other. So let's take a listen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, so there you have it. You could hear the difference between the two guitars. There is a, a definite feel difference between both mm -hmm. guitars. And that's not to say that one is set up better than the other. Actually, the Epiphone is set up very, very well. Mm -hmm. But they just feel different. Mm -hmm. The shape of the neck feels different. Um, the fact that this is bound without the nibs over the top, I don't know how much that changes it, but the, the way that the strings feel on the frets mm -hmm. is different. Um, and of course, you know, this is a satin finished polyurethane, you know, import guitar. Mm -hmm. That is a nitro finished, you know, guitar made in the USA. And it's not just a nitro finish, it's Tom Murphy's, you know, secret formula, yeah. so to speak. And uh, and it's got all of the requisite, you know, aging that's been done to this level. Mm -hmm. That, of course, definitely changes the feel of it. Um, there's a weight difference. There's a weight difference, which I think is interesting, because that one's heavier than this one. Um, this feel, this seems like it's thinner too. Is that just a visual weirdness that's going on? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure about the the depth of it. I do know that that one feels heavier, and this one has a solid maple cap on it, and that is a veneer. Well, it's got a maple. it's got a solid maple cap with a veneer for the flame. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's how they do that on these. But one of the things that's interesting about the custom shop is the bodies are always a single piece. They're yes. not they're not a two piece of mahogany. And you know what? I will confess I didn't know that for the longest time. I didn't even know that when I got mine. Um, but I always appreciated how light and resonant it was. And I do think that that is a big part of it because if anyone's ever played like a Norlin era Les Paul where they're like 15 pieces, um, they weigh as much as a collapsing star. Um, <laughs> So, uh, and they're not very resonant. So, yeah, I think it has something to do with it. So, I will say, if I were to buy an Epiphone Les Paul, I, it would be one of the 59s uh, because I like that. And I think that it's obvious when you feel the quality difference between one of the standards, like the 50s or 60s, because they work similar to how Gibson does. You mm -hmm. can get a standard Les Paul, and they're totally fine, but this one just has. I think the finish, obviously the better pickups, um, it's just great. So that's the choice for Epiphone. I like the Gibson more. <laughs> well, good, because it costs yeah. six times as much. Yeah, it's quite a upcharge on this bad boy. And honestly, I kind of go back and forth too, between 58s, 59s, 60s. I feel like there's always one that pulls me into different directions. I do love this one. And I like how you just seem to get a little bit more bite out of these pickups, a little mm -hmm. bit more warmth and everything. However, burst buckers are dang good for what they are, you know. Um, but I like checking. I like the finish. I like how, like, kind of nice and played in it feels. Mm -hmm. And the biggest difference for me is always going to be the neck. Yeah. You know, neck feel on this thing. Um they just get it right, and I feel like at this point they are purposefully keeping it from this one because <laughs> that would immediately make that one irresistible. You know? So I don't know if it's because it's the signature model, but we have a friend, Chris, who got a Dave Grohl uh, Epiphone and uh, brought it in, mm -hmm. and the neck was not this neck. And it's one of the most identifiable things I always... I can, with my eyes closed, pick guitars up. I've picked guitars up, you know, without knowing what it was and knew it was an Epiphone immediately. Um, and, and that was different. So yeah. it can be done, at least on a signature model. I will say this is another thing. It's a small thing. It can always be changed. But sometimes when I play on an Epiphone Les Paul, they're not the easiest to tune up. Mm -hmm. Like the tuners are just not fantastic. Uh, this thing tuned up perfectly, I think whatever brand of tuners that they're using on there. It's interesting because they are obviously Kluson style tuners. Yeah. And these are obviously Kluson style tuners. Yeah. But these are very different from these, even though they look the same. Um, even down... It, it's, they say it, Fender on them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Even down to like the, the buttons. I mean, it's just poured plastic, but like you can feel a difference. You can yeah. see a difference. It's subtle things. Is that worth six times as much? No. no. It's just the things that you pick up that but, are different. Yeah, that that uh, those tuners feel good. Yeah. These also feel good. They they just did a good job with both of these, and I think they fit nicely where they are. I think, uh, if you want my honest opinion, I think they're both overpriced. What do you think of the plain top on that? 
It's so plain, it hurts my eyes. <laughs> so, um, you know, Lee Anderton, yeah. he, he runs a small little uh, shop yeah. uh, overseas and a small YouTube channel. He has a 58. Yeah. And a real one? It, well, no, no, he has a reissue. Oh, gotcha, he has an R8. Gotcha. Uh, but it's the one, he, he prefers it. He yeah. actually prefers it both for the, the feel of the neck um, and the, the plain top. And you know what? Sometimes I I kind of like, yeah, I get that. It actually. works There's a classic really well for me with the checking added. <laughs> you know? Sure. Yeah. Like uh, I'm being serious. Because it gives us some character. It gives us some character. I like the burst. It's a good looking burst. But I think if I were to go for a plain top one, it'd have to strike me in a certain way, and this one does. Um, but I like too that they're sticking true to like we made a 58, and it's going to get the same type of top, and just like with those deluxe 70s. Yeah. Like they're plain top guitars. Yeah. They should be like that. But. When you look at a really nice 59 flame top, it's hard to resist. However, I know some people prefer less of a flashy thing, you yeah. know, and I kind of go back and forth. So Yeah, yeah. because you, sometimes I've seen 59s where it was the, like the flames ridiculous. Yeah. Something you never would have seen on a 59 Les Paul. Yeah. And to me there's something about that that kind of pulls me out of it a bit. I don't know. But to your back to your comment that I didn't want to like completely ignore. So you think that they are both a little overpriced? I do, but all guitars are now. Um, well, all guitars true. are a little bit overpriced. I think that's go one to Alamo Music. Yeah, you want to go Alamo Music. We're financing some That's people. the thing. I, I think in general, maybe it's just because it's like I want all of them, so I wish I could pay less for them. However, when you think about what other import guitars are now priced at, yeah. I do think that one's a good value. Well, and that's the thing because I have said to some other people about some other brands that there are guitars being made in Indonesia and in China and being imported to the US for $1,800, $2,500, $3,200. Yeah. And, and at that point, I feel like we've lost the plot because you're spending that much on an import guitar when the entire idea of an import guitar is to be lower priced because they're paying less for labor. Yeah. That's that's in case you didn't know, that's why import guitars cost less because the labor is less expensive than someone who's in Nashville working in the custom yeah. shop. Um, so I one of two things is happening. Either those companies have grossly inflated their margin, or they're paying their workers more. Let, I'll let you guess which one is most likely. Um, yeah. So in that world where you can get something like this with a different name on the headstock built around the same place in the world for twice the money this is a good value yeah and when you take into account buying a non-59 uh you know epiphone les paul and then doing all the things that they did to yeah. this um, it would come in over what is on the website as 9.99 yeah, if you had a case, you yeah, do the, the hard shell case and the everything. The hardware, the humbuckers. It would it would cost more. Um, so let let me put it this way: our original thought of this being twelve ninety nine, think overpriced, one dollar less than a thousand dollars. I think that's all. I think it's okay for yeah. me. Now over here, we're not gonna see any Gibson custom shops. I don't think ever again be less than five thousand dollars. Agree. Um, and. Everything else in between these two, they dropped prices on some of them this year. Some of them are going up. Fender's doing the exact same thing. They're sure. dropping prices on some things and other prices are going up. Every brand is doing it. I think Gibson, as we've talked about a little bit before, is moving towards being a custom shop brand. Right. More so than they already are. And they are going to keep making 58s, 59s, and 60s, as well as customs, you know, Les Paul customs, whatever. Well, let's talk um, about that real quick on the price difference. So um, as of right now, when you're seeing this, a Les Paul standard on our website is now $27.99 if it's got a figure top, $25.99 for most of the plain top stuff. You know, depending on 50s and 60s, 70s, deluxe, all that stuff. Um, that means that this is now more than twice as much as a standard 50s. Yeah. And, and what that means to me, at $27.99, a standard 50s, you get a lot of guitar for the money. Yeah. Because closer than this is, 
your nitro finished US made, you know, it not burst buckers or what is in the fifties nowadays? <laughs> I know it. Um is it it's not fifty seven classics. No. Yeah. It might be burst buckers. Yeah, it might be burst know. buckers. So you you get a lot of the way here. Mm-hmm. There's still something about the custom shop that's different. And I went through an exercise the other day where I looked at how much guitars went for it, you know, when they were originally done, and you factor in inflation. And actually, historically, prices have gone down on a lot of this stuff, which is shocking to think. And have you done an exercise on trying to find the price on an actual 58? <laughs> yeah, they're through the roof. And you know what? These get really, really close. How close do they get? Uh, there are a lot of musicians, uh, you know, big names like Jason Isbell, who have some original 58s, original 59s. They just did this with Slash recently, right? He's got these amazing instruments, and they make copies for them in the Murphy Lab Custom Shop. And these guys perform with them. And sometimes Jason Isbell on the Gibson YouTube channel said he sometimes can't tell the difference. Dang. Grabs one, thinks it's the other. I mean, there's also a certain kind of person that has been wanting a 58 or 59 for their whole life, and they have finally saved up. And no regular person will ever save up enough to get a 59 Les Paul unless you're Jason Isbell or whatever, you right. know. Um, and so there needs to be an option like this where it's the top of the line, really, really well made, kind of as close as you can get replica of something like that. And like you said, I mean, six grand, basically a little over six grand for this guitar. Um, <laughs> People pay that for guitars, and it always surprises me, but this is what somebody really, really wants, and so they're going to get it, you know? I have some very nice guitars. I have some very expensive guitars. Um, good thing I work for a music store. I have a 59. It is, we, I was telling you this before we started filming. It is becoming, or maybe has already become, my favorite guitar. Yeah. I'm grabbing it more and more and it more. It better be, dude. It's amazing, I you know, and if it, not, I know somebody that will take it <laughs> off your hands. It, it really, it really is phenomenal. And so, there's something about these instruments that I do think is special. The question that's always on these videos when we're cheap versus expensive is: Is it six times as much better? No, I mean, but that how do you even <laughs> how do you even define that? It's yeah. so subjective. And with musical instruments, it's it, what what is it worth to be inspired? Buck oh five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and look like, it cost me 90 dollars to fill my truck this morning okay oh, so man. you know let's let's not worry about the price of guitars yeah um i think the moral of this always is this one's i mean it's not cheap no this one's definitely expensive but uh they're both right for somebody and they're both good guitars i don't think we've ever done any of these where it's like this guitar is terrible <laughs> Um, so the good thing it came is, from Amazon and was blue. Yeah, we have done that. Um, but yeah, this, this is a great guitar. This is a great guitar. And um, now it's up to them. Now it's up to you. Yeah. So let us know in the comments. Uh, you know, do you find this worth it? Do you find that worth it? Are they both overpriced? Are they both relative good values in the proper context? Which would you choose is ultimately the answer. And that's, that's where we're going to end it, actually. Which one would I choose? I already made that choice. Which one would you choose? Yeah, that's, yeah, well, there you go. So let us know if you think we are both crazy and smoking crack, or if you would make the exact same choice that we did. Yeah, the, and it's like, which one would you choose has to be followed by something else. If money's no object, this one. If you have $1,000, this one. That one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, good point. If you uh, have not done so already, uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel, you like our videos, uh, leave us a comment and keep coming back for more. We'll see you uh, next time.